I were starting to run Pinterest ads in 2022, going into 2023, here are the things I would not do. Let's dive in. Number one, I would not run ads before my profile foundations were properly set up. What do I mean by this? Well, you really should have your profile at least built out very minimally using your top content to pin to boards related to the content. You should also have your display name and your bio filled out as well as a profile banner at the top. This is all going to establish you as a legitimate brand promoting on Pinterest and make you look a little less skeezy. Why is this important? Because Pinterest the way that their algorithms work are suggestion based, much like other platforms. So once someone engages with your Pinterest ad, they are more likely to see your organic content. And if you have no organic content, they're not going to see it natively in their feeds. And then you are losing out on potential. So do not skip over at least populating your content onto Pinterest, at least a little bit, maybe your top content. Number two, I would not start running ads without my Pinterest pixel being on my website for at least 90 days. Now this is not black and white. You have to have it on there for 90 days or you can't run ads. However, the accounts that we run ads for, our clients that we have ran ads for in the past and current day, all see a better return on ad spend when they have their Pinterest pixel on their website well before they actually plan to run ads. So if you need to learn how to install your own Pinterest pixel on your website, I have a playlist all about installing Pinterest tags. I will make sure to link it in the description down below and you can obviously click here and I will take you right on through that tutorial. Number three, I would not start running Pinterest ads with too low of a budget. Let me give you an example. I recently started my own Pinterest ads about two months ago again. I routinely run Pinterest ads throughout the year to A, test new features, and B, test my own products, funnels, landing pages, etc. So I started my Pinterest ads at $5 a day to validate the imagery first. I wanted to see what images were going to win out in the Pinterest algorithm, and then later I bumped my budget to $15 a day as I began to scale the campaign. Now, another reason you don't want to start your Pinterest budget too low is because Pinterest is going to take time to deliver those ads to audiences. So the lower you start your budget, the less likely your ads are going to be seen by the people you want to see them. So don't start your budget too low. Pinterest is not gonna have enough to work with and there is actually a new feature rolling out and they are beta testing it on new accounts that have never ran ads before and that is capping you at a minimum of $15 per day to run Pinterest ads. They have a budget selection you can choose from and you cannot start ads for less than that when you very first launch them out. Now that doesn't mean you can't go back and remove the budget later or lower the budget later, but to start the ads, they've actually got this new feature that they're beta testing on making people choose a higher budget and it's only going to benefit you in the future. Number four. Do not optimize your ads too quickly. If you are optimizing your Pinterest ads too quickly and removing interests, keywords, and targeting demographics before 14 days on Pinterest, then the platform and the algorithm are, it's gonna have a really hard time figuring out who to show your pins to and who's the most interested in your Pinterest image and your ad. So I really do not suggest doing any interest or targeting based optimizations until about day 14, but day 10 to 14, you can begin to start changing little things like demographics, for example, but do not optimize your Pinterest ads too quickly. Now there's a small caveat to this, and I've been doing this more frequently, and that is changing my Pinterest images quicker. So in the first seven days, if I notice a Pinterest image just isn't getting to that 1% click through rate I want it to be at, then I will add in new images. Now, I like to leave myself room, so I only ever start campaigns with about three images in it, and I give myself enough budget to go up to five images. So if I notice those three just are not performing, I'll add another one in at about day seven. So there is a lot of nuance to this, and there is a lot of decision making that's going to go on behind the scenes based on click-through rate and performance overall. However, optimizing too quickly can kill your campaign. Number five, I would wait too long to optimize your landing pages 
your listings in your store, your email list sequences, because what you're gonna notice is that if your ads are performing according to Pinterest best practices, if you're getting a 1% or higher click-through rate, if you're getting people to sign up for your freebie or buy products, but you're just not able to get the results that you need in order to scale, then chances are it probably has something to do with your landing page, your email sequence, your shop listings, things like that, the buttons on your store. So make sure you are paying attention to where people are falling off and use tools like Hotjar to help you to heat map your site so you can see what people are doing when they land on your website and then begin optimizing one thing at a time. Do not optimize everything. Do not change the whole landing page. Just start slow and begin optimizing your landing pages, your email lists, your shop listings, wherever you're sending them. That way you can convert more people as you get more people in there. Number six, I would not, me personally, would not run ads to a product that has not been validated. When I say product, I also mean digital product, freebie offer, anything for content creators, but also for e-commerce. If you are running Pinterest ads to something that has not been validated organically, that people are not purchasing organically, then you are going to be paying for data to see who is going to convert. So there are two schools of thought for this. You can definitely test with ad money to figure out what audience and what product is gonna convert the best for you. But if it's already per, you know, converting organically, then that would be something I would be more likely to run ads to. I will not take clients for Pinterest ads if they do not have a validated product and offer because I do not wanna waste your time trying to figure out what's gonna convert because money and time matter. The more money I have to spend to figure out what's gonna convert for your business, the more money you're gonna to have to make and the more you're gonna to have to make up. Chances are, if it's not already validated organically, then you may not have the budget to waste or the time to waste. So I personally will not run ads for clients that do not have a validated organic selling offer. And number seven, I would not wait too long to get help on your Pinterest ads. If you've begun running ads or if you're thinking about running ads and you are going to probably need some help at some point in the near future. There are a lot of things to consider when you're running Pinterest ads like optimizing, landing page conversion rate, all of that stuff. And this is stuff that a professional like myself can definitely help you identify. Now, within my business, I have two ways, two common ways that people will come to us and ask for help. The first way, is through the agency side of my business where we will do done for you services like a full ads audit and we will tell you where your gaps are what optimizations you can make if the product is converting what your conversion rates are things like that can help you to identify if you want to continue spending money on ads or not the second way that you can commonly work with us is through our paid membership pin profit academy i have a beginners Pinterest ad course in there and we have a community where you can gain help and insight as well. And that's if you want more of a do-it-yourself approach and you want to run your own ads but you just want to understand how to do it and you want a lower price point and maybe just a little bit of help along the way. So those are the two common ways that we help people run ads. I would definitely find someone that you're comfortable with when you are ready and make sure you get that help that you need that so you're not wasting money on Pinterest ads and not understanding what you need to do to make them even better. So that's it. Those are the seven things that I would not do if I were starting to run Pinterest ads as a beginner or intermediate um, in this market. I really hope this helps you to better gain insight into what you need to do versus what you don't need to do when running Pinterest ads in going into the next year. So if you need any more Pinterest ads advice or help, make sure to watch these videos and I will see you next week.